Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, we are back with part two of our Yom Hashem Day of the Lord kind of overview. So what we did last week was we looked at kind of our earlier book prophets, with the exception of Tzfania. Tzfania is already skipping ahead a bit, right? And we looked at to see what they say about about Yom Hashem, about the day of the Lord, day of the Lord, right? What are the attributes of this day? So what we found was that in general, this day, there's an idea of kind of a judgment of the nations. We saw this mostly in Yeshayahu, honestly, with, with kind of the nations coming and, and there being this kind of judgment of the nations. And also there's this idea of a kind of a disaster or a general war that affects all of Israel slash Judah, and you have to hope to be one of, excuse me, you have to hope to be one of the remnants, okay? So you have to hope, you have to hope to be one of the remnants of, uh, one of the remnant of the people who survived this terrible disaster. It doesn't seem like the way it's presented in these, in these things when it talks about how disastrous, the, how disastrous this day can be right? It's not, it doesn't seem to be that, um, oh, if I'm righteous, I'm going to get off scot-free. The answer isn't, oh, just be righteous and you'll be fine. Yeah, if you're wicked, then it's your fault. But no, it's not a situation of, I know I'm going to be okay. Now, when Amos describes, that, why do you, why are you asking for the day of, day of, day of the Lord, Yom Hashem, it's a day of darkness and not, 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 um, not, uh, not light. And it's like you're running, you're, you're, you're running from a line and the bear gets you and you put your hand on the wall when you get into the house and the snake bites it, right? No matter what, you're going through, there are numerous disasters that are part of this and you can get hit by any of them, right? Don't think you're going to get away scot-free. Now, of course, I'm is talking mainly to the wicked, but he doesn't say, oh, and if you're right, just don't worry, right? And I mentioned that we don't get to this idea when we're talking about these sort of kind of collective disasters, we don't get to this idea of if you're good, you're going to get away scot-free until we get to Yechezkel, until we get to Ezekiel much, much later. And I posited, and I've said this idea before, I posited that the reason this is true is because uh, as long as the entire nation is living on the same, in the same land, that what affects one affects all. In other words, you can't have a situation where there's a war and some people are getting away scot-free. A war is going to affect everyone. It's going to be a disaster for everyone. So if there's a war because of wicked people, it's going to affect everyone. But once we get to Yechezkel, Yechezkel is the first one who really starts breaking down and saying, if you are righteous, you will not save the wicked people around you. And at the same time, you will not suffer with it. Right? And we can get to this idea when you have these, this active diaspora community that feels very connected to what's going on in Israel, but they still know that what happens in Israel isn't happening to them in the same way. Right? And what happens to them isn't happening to those who have remained in the land of Israel. And once you have that disconnect, you can then have this idea, this, imag this imagining of a collective punishment that some people are going to get away from scot-free and why would they do that? Well, because they're righteous, right? So you have a, a shift in what this day could be. So I, I wanna keep with that in mind as we talk about how this idea kind of plays out in some of the later, later um, prophecies. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the um, uh, kind of Yechezkel, Yechezkel, Gogu Magog and Yechezkel, you know, Armageddon, which is actually very different from what we've seen. Like, it's hard to even say, is this supposed to fit into that category or not, right? Um, and we're going to look at, of course, the, um, the prophets of the return to Zion, specifically Zechariah and Malachi. But well, let's also look at Svanya, because Svanya is talking around the same time as Yirmiyahu. Uh, in other words, a little bit earlier than uh, Ichesto. So let's revisit Svanya because we looked at him last time. We'll just do this quickly. Um, and just to, uh, so let me open that and I will share my screen. Any questions before we start? No, okay, great. Just a sec. Do, 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 do. Oh. Okay, Svanya. Right. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, so. Oh, you see it. Okay, great. Um, all right, so you see already um, um, the, uh, we're in Svanya, Perak Aleph, Svanya chapter one. We looked at this before, and again, I'm, I'm repeating this just because we're kind of skipping ahead. Oh, and we're also going to be looking at Yoel. Yoel is going to be an important person to look, an important prophet to look at uh, today when we're talking about uh, Yom, Yom Hashem, okay, uh, the Lord. Um, so here we have, um, he's talking about, um, um, he says, Has mipnei Adonai Elohim ki karov yom Adonai ki echin Adonai zevach hikdish kruav. Right? Watch out the day of, um, you know, um, um, be quiet as, as God kind of draws near because the day of, of the day of, uh, because the day of God is close because God has, has prepared his sacrifice. And the sacrifice is essentially the people who are going to die, right? Um, and so any, everyone who, every, there's a tremendous punishment of everyone who has been kind of, um, particularly the idol worshipers and, um, um, and all the merchants um, are going to be, are going to be, uh, are going to be killed. And it's, um, and also the people, on that day, I'm going to look through Jerusalem with candles or like search it closely. Right or search with uh, um, like a candelabra, I guess. Um, and I'm going to note the people who are just kind of staying put, watching their own stuff, who are saying how mimble vavam lo yetiv Hashem v'lo They say in their hearts, God doesn't do good and God doesn't do bad. In other words, these are people who don't believe that God affects the world. Right? It's not necessarily they don't believe that God has power, but they think God has like is like not not getting involved. Right, and that in itself is a is a sin. And what they're going to do is they're going to lose all their property. And I think it's it's important to note there's a difference here. Those who kind of are are idol worshippers or kind of they they bring in foreign ways, they're going to be punished. Uh, it see, sounds like with 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 um, with death. Whereas these people who are like, you know what, I'm not taking a stand. I don't think God gets involved. They're going to lose their wealth. Right, they're going to lose everything they own. Right, their houses are going to be destroyed. Vatam lishmama, their houses will be destroyed. Uvanu vatim velo yeshevu benatu kramim velo yishtu atenam, and they'll build houses that they won't dwell, and they'll they'll plant vineyards and they won't drink their wine. This is, of course, the curse, the 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 the, the, the biblical curse, right, in the Pentateuch. Um, and again, it says, Karov yom Adonai hagadol, Karov maher maod, Kol yom Adonai matzarach sham gibor. The day of the Lord is close. It's, a, 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 it's coming close very quickly. The, the sound of the day of the Lord is a, is this, is a bitter scream from, from, the, from, the, um, 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 from the strong man, from the, from the hero. Um, um, it's a day of anger. It's a day of of, of of distress and sorrow. It's a day of total destruction. It's a day of darkness. It's a day of fog. It's a day of war. It's a day of the call of the shofar, which remember declares war on the cities, on the fortified cities, and on the high corners. Um, um, I am going to um, to bring distress on people. They're going to walk around. They're going to stumble around like blind people because they sin to God. Their blood will be spilled like dust. Their flesh will be like um, uh, droppings on the ground. Um, and also their silver, their silver, their gold will not be able to save them on the day of God's anger, the entire land will be consumed. Because everyone is going to be um, 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 destroyed, right? All the inhabitants. Now, this total destruction and this like no one's going to get off free. This is a classic kind of day of the Lord thing. It's a horrible day, right? It's a terrible day. And the point is, and we talked about this last time, um, the point is that, that then what happens is um, 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 the Israelites slash Judahites come out, um, come out cleansed, 
in some way. This is you come out, the idea is that you come out on the other side, right? Somehow, somehow. Now you don't always have that in the in the Amashem. But we have this, for example, so if we look at Svanya, if we look at if since we're in Svanya and we're getting again, yeah, so now we're talking towards the end of the first temple period. Okay. So now I'm reading from um Paragimel chapter three. Okay, uh, verse 16, it should be, yes, Ted Zion, 16. Um, but I feel like it should go back. Let me make sure if I've got it right. Um, okay, so it's, it, it, it's, um, um, it's talking about, uh, this is a little bit different. This is more, this is more um, um, a day of salvation. This is less, this is less day of the Lord and really is much more, this is the day of, of salvation, but it's not a classic Yom. It's not a classic Yom Hashem. It's not a classic day of the Lord. Uh, he writes, he all you and on that day, uh, I'll say to, uh, to Jerusalem will be said, do not fear. To Zion, do not let your hands weaken. Um, God is in your midst as a saving uh, power, a saving hero, right? Um, so in other words, God's going to save you. Now, this is, if we go, the truth is you have to kind of go back um, to the beginning of the chapter to kind of get the, um, to get the, the context of the day of the Lord. So if we go to the beginning uh, of the chapter, I'm going to do this very quickly because I know we have a lot to cover today. Um, so it's talking about how much Jerusalem has sinned, right? Um, and hasn't learned, right? And then it says, And here we're going back to the day of the Lord, because the day of the Lord is, traditionally includes this judgment of the nations. So it says, just wait, okay? I'm going to rise up and I'm going to, I'm going to join, I'm going to gather the kingdoms together to, you know, it says, mishpatila, so like my rule is to gather them, but I think it's also a little bit of a play on the words because the ideas are gathered for judgment and then I'm going to spill my anger on them, right? So again, the day of the Lord usually in includes the gathering of the nations themselves, not just gathering of the exiles from the nations, the gathering of the nations themselves to Zion where they are judged. Um, some are destroyed, the bad ones are destroyed, right? Or the bad ones from among them are destroyed. And and here ki az hapoch el amim sapad rura likro kolam b'shem orai lavdosh chem achad and this is frequently the result of the day of the Lord. There's this judgment, and then the nations recognize that God, that the Lord is God, right? Adonai hu Elohim, right? That's what they recognize, right? And then um and they bring offerings, right? Ki um um me'ever l'nare chusha terai bat b'tzai yohi lun min 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 chati. They are going to bring um bring offerings from from uh from beyond the rivers of ethiopia or of nubia right that from very far away all these nations are going to be bringing offerings right and on that day right um 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 we're going to have the remnant of israel sheirit israel lo yasu avla v'lo yidabru chazav what remains of israel after this tremendous day of the Lord, remember again, what remains, people have died, a lot of people have died, but what remains, they will no longer do, they will no longer sin, okay? They will no longer sin, they will no longer lie, right? And then, you know, um, I'm, I'm rejoice, you know, rejoice, I'm with you, I'll save you. But the idea is, is that you've come through it, right? You came through this day of the Lord, the nations were judged, God's anger was spilled out, and what's left of Israel now has been purified. They will no longer sin. Okay, classic Yom Hashem. And again, we don't have it in every prophet. This is not, uh, it's not super prominent in Yirmiyahu. It's not super prominent. It will be called Second Isaiah. And when I say not prominent, what I mean is, um, what I mean is not that they don't talk about a day of punishment or a day of salvation. I mean, they don't talk about it in these terms. 
Okay, there's a specific kind of pattern of of Yom Hashem of the day of the Lord, right? A pattern usually which is kind of cataclysmic. It includes a terrible battle, usually includes judgment of the nation. You have to kind of get through it, right? It's not the classic, you sinned and you will therefore all be punished. And afterwards, I will punish the nation that did it to you, right? It's it's something special on its own. That's also, again, I'll remind you, was clearly something that everyone recognized when Amos was saying, guys, why, are, why do you want the day of God? It's a day of darkness and not light. What are you, what are you, what are you are yearning for? Right? So there's, they're already, they're talking about this. This is a, this is a tradition that goes way, 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 way back. And that continues to kind of evolve as we go through and, and, and then we get to the second temple period where then we have the whole genre of what we call apocalyptic, right? Where you have this apocalyptic, you know, apocalyptic cataclysmic thing that separates the, the, the sinners from the righteous, right? But we haven't gotten there quite there yet, right? We're not there yet, right? So let's take a look at, um, um, let's take a look before we go to the, the, um, the prophets of return to Zion. Let's take a look at Yechezkel. And I'm going to do this briefly because you can really sink into the whole Gogu Magog thing, right? The whole battle of Gogu Magog. It doesn't, and I'm going to say, it doesn't look like a day of the Lord. Like it doesn't look, it doesn't have these aspects in the same way that we've seen it across, across a different prophets. Okay, I'm going to pause for questions. Any questions? Clear to everyone? Okay, cool. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Yecheskel time. Okay, Yecheskel. Let us do, let's, I, first a very quick reference that we have in chapter 13 in Parakya Gimel, okay? And in this, in this thing, it's really just kind of mentioning the day of God to say these false prophets are not going to help you on the day of God, right? Ben Adam, he nevei al nevei Yisrael ha nevaim ve amartel le nevei milibam shim ud bar Adonai, right? Um, son of man, prophesy against, the, uh, against the, or to the prophets of Israel, are prophesying and and we're prophesying mili bam they're making things up right listen to the word of god and essentially what what he's saying um um you are not um lo alitem ba pratsot ve tigderu gader al beit israel la mod ba melchama ba yom adonai you are not going up into like into the breach you're not creating a a, a fence uh they say a hedge or whatever to stand in, at war on the day of God. In other words, you are no protection to the people of Israel. When when push comes to shove, you are absolutely worthless, right? I wonder if this reference to the day of God may be because they're prophesying the day of God. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe what's happening with these false prophets is they're prophesying the day of God, right? Again, remember the Echezkel is talking to people who have already been asked out, asked out from Babylonia. So for them to be able to picture something where they're gonna get back, you need something kind of cataclysmic. I wonder if the prophets he's talking to are actually prophesying in the day of God. And that's why he's referencing it here. Okay. All right. So, um, and, and after that, I'm going to go, going to kind of just jump to our chapters uh, 38, Lamed Chet. Okay. And Gog Umagog. Okay. So uh, one of the nations of Gog Umagog, there's a whole, um, there's a whole argument about who we could be referring to here, it's clear that he's referring to, this is referring to the me, does he, who exactly is he referring to? Um, without, I, I, um, without going into it much, let's just quickly see how he describes this, um, this battle. Okay, so he's, what, what he's saying is, that's a little weird um, because what he, what he seems to say is that go Magog, are going to here. Um, so here, miyamim rabim tipaked b'charita shanim tavo el eretz mishlovevet mecherav b'kubetet miyamim rabim al harei Yisrael asher hayu lechorbat tamid v'hi miyamim hutsa v'yashvu levetach kulam. 
And this seems to be, it's possible that what we're talking here is, is kind of the gathering of nations. In other words, is it's the land of Israel, right? It has been a ruin, right? And everyone has been taken out, right? Everyone is, is left and is dwelling safely, but it, it, this land is empty and they're all coming on it, right? Right, except what it sounds like is there are people living it because it says, um, and, and what, what it's possible is it, it doesn't make it doesn't the he doesn't make a lot of sense, right? It's it's um, that it sounds like it's it, all the nations have been removed from it, but it says, and everyone is living safely there, so it's not quite clear what's going on. Um, and you, this nation, these these nations of 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 um, of, um, of of Persia and Kush and Put, right? They're go, they're Gomer. They're all going to go, and they're going to with many multiple nations. They're all kind of kind of descend. They're going to say, "Oh, we're going to conquer these lands that don't have any standing. Any they're not they're no fortifications, right?" Um, we're going to invade all these people who are kind of dwelling safely without any sort of protective walls. They're all dwelling without a wall. They don't have a, they don't have bars or gates. Um, and they want to, um, they're going to take spoils. Okay. And everyone's coming, right? And so you're saying, um, Right, so what it sounds like is going on here. It's very strange. It's like this is some future time when Israel is dwelling safely in the land without fortifications, okay? And all these nations are coming to try and conquer them, right? Gogu Magog, but he's mentioned all these other nations within, apparently within them, right, or being led by them, and they're coming to descend on them, right? Valita al ami Israel kanan lachasot haaretz b'charita yamim tiye. And you're all going to go up against my nation Israel like a cloud covering the land, right? This is at the end of days. This will be at the end of days. I'm going to bring them to you, bring you to my land so that all the nations will know why, why, why I'm, when I'm sanctified in front of your eyes, go, right? What does this mean? If we, let's put this back into the context of the day of the Lord. What elements do we have here that are turning this into the day of the Lord? What's going on is Israel is in Israel. The, the people of Israel are in Israel. They're dwelling without fortifications. We don't, it's not clear quite why. They're dwelling without fortifications. And all the nations are going to be gathered against them to descend on them. And why is God doing it? because God wants to be sanctified before the nations. This is a classic setup of the day of God because you need to gather all the nations on Zion. They're gonna be judged and then they recognize God, okay? So, and there's a battle, right? There's a war, all right? There's a, not necessarily battle. God can judge and just destroy, in some, but in some versions, there's a battle where people from Israel are killed. Now, are people from Israel um, killed here or are they all saved? All right, is this just against the nations, right? Um, and here we're going to have another thing, which is the shaking, the kind of the earthquake. And in my zealousness and the, the fire of my anger, I spoke, I'm, I'm speaking. If there won't be a great earthquake on that day on the land of Israel, if you guys remember, um, if you guys remember in Amos, right? Amos also has the earthquake, right? An earthquake being part of this day of God. And in general, it's kind of supernatural revelation almost as part of the day of God or great miraculous things happening, right? Darkness in the middle of the day, we saw that, you know, like different different aspects of this. The earthquake is also is 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 um, is uh, echoing Amos, right? And probably part of a general tradition about what's going to be in Yom Hashem. Um, right, everything is going to all um, there's going to be an earthquake, all the beasts in the field, the fishes, everything's going to feel it, all the people are going to feel it, all the walls are going to fall down. It's a tremendous earthquake. earthquake. 
Bekarati alav the call harai cherev no bad adnayo him cherev ish bachiv tiye. Right, and there's going to be a civil war. There's going to be everyone's going to be fighting each other. Vinishpati to bedever ubedam vegeshem shotef apnel gavish eish gofrit amtir lav al gapav ve'el amim rabim asher ito. Okay, I'm going to be in judgment with him. Right through through um through disease and through blood and through um and through uh rain and fire and brimstone. I'm going to I'm going to rain down. Right, right, and I will be will be glorified, and I will be uh, sanctified, and I will be known before many nations. The point of this tremendous earthquake and fire and brimstone is for the nations to recognize me. Um, <clears throat> and um, and then. I think this is where the Kaddish comes from. What? Sorry. I think this is where the Kaddish comes from. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I think this I think is where the Kaddish comes from. Where the what comes from? Kaddish. Kaddish. Ah, nice. I did not know that. So cool. <laughs> um, um, and um, <clears throat> and then. God's going to fight. Um, 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 go, God goes, he's going to bring Gog, right, to the mountains of Israel, right? And there Gog will fall, right? And he will he will die and be eaten by the birds, right? Um, and then Magog is going to be uh, set aflame, right? And again, Vetshem Kochi O Dia Betocha Mi Yisrael. And now I'm going to be sanctified in Israel as well, in Israel and among the nations, right? This is the day is coming. That's the day I spoke about. Um, um, and, and the people who dwell in the cities of Israel, Israel, they're going to have to take all these weapons. There's going to be such a battle on, on this land. They're going to be burning the weapons for seven years, right? And they're not going to need any wood from the field or from the forest because they're going to have so much wood from all the weapons, right? And they're going to have all these spoils. Right, and not only that, but they're going to have to deal with the bodies for seven months. Right, they're going to have to have a, a whole system of people from Israel burying bodies of the enemy for months. Right, Yechezka likes to kind of make sure everything's taken care of. Right, so where, how, what about the bodies? Well, you know, you're going to have to bury them. Or how do we have enough people? Well, we're going to have to have a shift. You have to have people who are designated to bury all these bodies, okay? Now, if you remember what I said to you before, <clears throat> if you remember what I said to you before about this idea of the day of God being disastrous, not only for, you know, not only being a judgment day for the nations, but being disastrous for Israel itself. Being a, you have to hope you're going to come through it. Note that with Yechezkel, that doesn't, it doesn't sound like that. Not for Israel, right? Nations are going to be destroyed, but it's, he's not presenting it as a disastrous day for Israel, except that Israel is going to have to deal with the bodies afterwards. On the contrary, they come out of it with a lot of wood, a lot of wood from all the weapons and a lot of spoils, right? And God has sanctified himself in front of them. So this connects to what I was saying before, that once we get to the time of the Cheskel, there's much more of an idea of, hey, you can get out of this scot-free, right? Just do what you're supposed to do and you can get out of it scot-free, right? Now, I'm not saying that this is generally accepted by everyone and we'll see in Zechariah, it's certainly not, right? Zechariah, Zechariah describes a pretty horrific, a pretty horrific apocalyptic future. Um, which is, you know, in its way, shocking. Um, but in, in fact, let's let's. Uh, I think let's let's just jump to that now. 
um, because it's it's kind of um, it's it's uh, it's it's shocking when we when we read it when we read it in Zechariah the extent to which uh, he is uh, prophesying about a horrible ending um, is uh, is really um, I'll say it again it's distressing it's the last time I'll say it. I'll try not to say distressing again <laughs> here we go okay Zechariah. Here we are. Okay, so with Zechariah, now we're talking about, um, um, I'm going to, there is a reference here. Let me look at here. Um, you know what, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, going to, uh, um, there's there's a reference here, this in chapter 12 in Parakut Bet, there's kind of a reference to, to a day where um, where Jerusalem is going to be Yerushalayim, Evan Mamasa, Jerusalem is going to be a stone of burden to all the nations. It's not quite clear what that means. It, it sounds like it means is that they're not they're going to get scratched when they try and go up against it. And it says Benesfu Aleha Kogoyeha Aretz. Here's our here's our standard. All the nations are going to gather. Now I'm going to remind you, Zechariah is talking about the return to Zion. In other words, Zechariah, we're leaping ahead. The same way we leapt ahead a little bit with Yechezkel, a little bit with Svanya and Yechezkel, right? But Yechezkel speaking in Babylonia after the exile, after initially, initially after the exile, Zechariah now is speaking after the return to Zion, all right? And he is describing also kind of a day of God. Uh, um, again, here, here in a small version, all the nations are going to gather to Jerusalem and all of the horses and chariots are going to be confused. Um, and, um, and, um, um, the, the champions of Yehuda are going to, are going to be like, a like, um, uh, a fire, right. And, uh, kind of burn everything around. Okay. And by Yom Ahu, again, Adonai Ba'ad Yoshev Yushalayim, Vayah Nikshal Bahem, Vayom Ahu, Ki David, Uveit David Ki Elohim, Ki Malach Adonai Lefnehem. On that day, God will defend those who dwell in Jerusalem, and the weakest of them will be like David, and someone from the house of David will be like God, and like an angel of God before them. Right? And essentially, the nations are going to be destroyed. And again, it sounds like this is close, closer to what we, we saw with Yechezkel, where it seems like Yehuda is going to win. Yehuda will be fine. Remember, at this point in Zechariah, Yehuda is kind of what there is. We can talk about Jews now, right? Like it's sort of Israel, we'll say Jews, right? The Jews will be fine. Nations are going to be destroyed and the Jews will be okay, right? Now, it's not quite that way, though. We skip ahead to Yud Dalit. Now, of course, uh, we are well into what these scholars would call Deutero Zechariah. We say put to a different source already in Yudbet we were. You're already there, you know, when we're reading from chapter 12. There's a there's an issue where I remember if you remember if we talked about Zachariah before, that in the bulk of Zachariah, the future is seen as one of natural bounty, right? Young, young ch children and people living in the wide areas of Jerusalem, right? That is bounty. That is people who don't who aren't working can still live. Everything is wonderful. That is the future that Zechariah is seeing. Here it is not. Here it is very different. Here we see an apocalyptic ending, right? And here's the Yom Hashem, right? Here's the, um, here's the uh, day of the Lord, uh, and it's the famous one, okay? So Zechariah is valid. Hine yom bala Adonai v'chulak shalech b'kirbech, right? The day will come, a day unto God, when your spoil will be divided in your midst. That honestly, we should already hear that doesn't sound, that actually doesn't sound good. We say, oh yeah, that means we're going to get spoiled. No, it means your stuff is going to be divided and given out, right? That's not good, right? And I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem for war, and the ear, the, ch the city rather, the city will be conquered, right? The, the houses will be will be um, will be robbed, uh, destroyed, and the women will be raped, 
right? And half of the city is going to go out in exile, right? And half will remain, right? Um, and then God is going to go and fight them. Right? And God's feet, as it were, right, are going to stand on the Mount of Olives, right? I'm reading from verse four, the Pasuk Dalit, from the east, and the um the um uh, Mount of Olives is going to be split east and west in the big valley and half of the city from east to west it's going to be split and the north and south pieces are going to move from each other right again this is the earthquake this is the, the earthquake right except that the cities can be set north and south now we, we always read it because of um of, of the war in 48 and then the six day war because of 48, we always think of it as the, it's gonna be split east and west. No, it's not split east and west. It's split north and south. It's split from east to west and it's split north and south and the mountain moves from each other, right? And this is this is where things are still bad, right? And you're going to flee into the valley the way you the way you fled from the earthquake in the time of Uziah, right? Uziah has the famous earthquake, everyone remembers it. Just the same way you're going to flee from this earthquake. All right. And this is also a hint that the righteous one are going to be saved. Um, and um, um, all the holy ones will be with you, right? It, it's not clear. You could say, well, does, is, there a ref is this a reference to angels? I don't think so. I think, I, I, I'm not sure. It could be a reference to the angels will be on your side, or it could be referenced because at this point in Zechariah, we can already talk, we're already talking really about angels much more. Um, or it could be saying all the holy people are going to be with you. In other words, the good guys are going to escape. Remember what I said about once they have been through the exile, there's this idea that the good guys can actually escape even when bad things are happening to everyone. Um, right? There's not going to be light on that day. Remember, it's a day of darkness and not light, right? <coughs> it's just going to be cloudy and impossible to see. Um, and it's going to be, in general, it's going to be miraculous. It's going to be a day that's that's not a day and not a night in the evening it's going to be light so it's just going to everything's going to be going to be um um confused and on that day there's going to be a river coming out of jerusalem half to the um dead sea and half to the um to the sea so um this actually is reflecting something that we have in uh, in Yechezkel. Yechezkel also talks about, an er you know, much earlier, Yechezkel talks about a river coming out of the temple. When Yechezkel talks about a river that's going to come out of the temple, he talks about it also in terms of it's going to flow to the Dead Sea and sweeten that water. In other words, it's going to make the water from the Dead Sea into potable water or potable water um, so that it can be used for agriculture, right? That's, that's what Yechezkel... Uh, uh, says there, and here we're we're reflecting that same tradition, right? Um, um, we're all familiar with this from prayer. Um, and on that day, um, God will be uh, a king over the whole land. On that day, God will be one, and His name will be one. Um, and um, and from that point on, I'm skipping to a verse Vyashvuva. And from that day, um, Jerusalem, those who dwell in Jerusalem will dwell, dwell safely, right? So we have this tremendous apocalyptic battle. We have this tremendous battle. We have half of the city is the city is destroyed. Half the city goes out in exiles. Women are it's, it's horrible, right? But the people flee to the valley. Uh, apparently, the righteous people with them, and after that. There, God and go, God goes against the nations and destroys the nations or destroys the bad nations, and 
um, and they live safely. We can kind of see here the parallels between this and, and Gogu Magog, right? Even though there's much more of a destruction in Jerusalem itself here. Here, there's much more of a, wow, the, the, the whole ominous, when we talked last week about the ominous nature of the day of God, of just how, how scary it's supposed to be, we get that here, right? This is a scary, horrible day, right? It's not, oh, yay, wonderful, day of God. It's, you've got a horrible war, a city is caught, the city, city is captured, bad things happen, there's an earthquake, everyone runs, and then God defeats the nations. God defeats the nations, everyone sees God, it's a tremendous revelation of God, and after that, the Jews, A, recognize God, and B, dwell safely in Jerusalem, all right? And, um, and what happens to all the nations? We've done this before, the classic Indiana Jones scene. What is, this is what's going to happen. This is the, the plague that's going to immediately afflict all the nations that come to Jerusalem. Their flesh is going to melt off uh, while they're standing on their feet. Their eyes are going to melt in their sockets and their tongue is going to melt in their mouths. Um, I, I've done, I've shown you the Indian and shown to you before, but it's, it's all built based on this, again, that as, they, as Nazis are standing, right, uh, everything melts, right? So um, um, uh, this, is, this is what happens to the nations at that time, right? And then, um, and then we have a civil war. We're going back to what we thought we were done. We're not done, right? Everyone is still fighting. There's going to be a kind of a, a tumble and a confusion, and everyone's going to be fighting each other. And Yehuda will also be fighting in Jerusalem. And all of, and it's all of the wealth of the nations is going to be kind of gathered a lot of um, gold and silver and clothing. And there's going to be a plague of animals and everyone. And essentially it goes right from, it, it, it's kind of describing the, it, what this is, is, excuse me, I'm going to go back. What this is, what we're seeing here is kind of a, 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 a description of that whole, we're going back. Okay, I'm going to say this again. So in, so we had this, oh, this is what's going to happen. All the nations are going to be destroyed. The, the God's going to go against the nations, and then then uh, Jerusalem's going to be saved. So now we're going to go. We're going back, and we're describing what's actually happening to the nations and what happened during this battle. So during this battle, all there was this plague. All the, their flesh you know, melted away. Everyone was fighting against each other. Yehuda was fighting for Jerusalem, and also the the animals had a play. And meanwhile, there was all this wealth that was gathered in Jerusalem because so there'll be spoils for Yehuda. Okay, all right, and that's what happened during the battle. Now we're skipping ahead to when everything's wonderful. All right, so after the battle. Afterwards, anyone who's remained from the nations, because a lot of them have been killed, anyone who remains from the nations will come every year to bow down to the king, uh, God, God of hosts, Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of Sukkot, of tabernacles, which is why on Sukkot we have all the people from all over the world come for the parade through Jerusalem, right? That's why it's Sukkot, because of this verse in Zechariah, right? Um, that all the nations are supposed to come to uh, Jerusalem to celebrate on Sukkot. Um, and anyone who doesn't, right, what's going to happen to them? They're not going to have rain. And what about Egypt that doesn't need rain? If Egypt doesn't need rain, then they're going to get the plague. That plague where the flesh melted, blah, blah, blah. That's what they're going to get if they don't come to sacrifice to, to celebrate Sukkot. So they better come. All right. So the, the upshot is every year, every year, um, um, everyone, all the nations are going to come to sacrifice to God to celebrate Sukkot. All right. 
And there's just going to be this tremendous amount of sacrifices, a tremendous amount of vessels that we'll need for the sacrifices, and it's going to be wonderful. Okay, so here we have a, 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 a classic kind of day of God where we have kind of the horror and the ominousness of the day of God for the Jews as well, right? And um, we have all the nations coming on Jerusalem. We have a much more kind of described, a deeply described battle on how God's going to win and how they're going to die, right? And then afterwards, that recognition, the complete recognition of the nations and of Israel of God. Right. Um, we have a hint again because it's now we're now in we're now after the exile. We have this hint that maybe the righteous people will automatically be saved, but we still have this tremendous uh, disaster in the city that is still the scary part of the day of God. Right. Um, now let's go back a little before we finish with Malachi, because um, we can finish off with Malachi. Um, I hope you'll uh, allow me to go for a second to Yoel because we didn't do Yoel. Why haven't we done Yoel? We haven't done Yoel <clears throat> because, as I've mentioned before, there's good reason to think that Yoel is talking during the Second Temple period, right? Yoel mentions a past exile. Yoel is talking at a time of a functioning temple. It sounds like Yoel is talking during the Second Temple period. That's what it sounds like. That if you put it all together, that's what it seems like, despite his place in the in the Treasar, in the in the order of the twelve prophets. Um, so if we uh, take a look, let me go into Yoel. Down it, I'll just assume I was going to find it. Yeah. Okay. Now Yoel is interesting because Yoel is, as you know, half of Yoel is all about locusts and half of it is about the day of God and you don't really know when he switches, right? It gets kind of confusing, right? Because he's talking about this tremendous plague of locusts and he describes them like an army. And then he goes right into kind of the day of God. So let's let's take a look. Okay, so here I am in Yoel, all right? And he's talking about, and he's still, he's a tikku shofar b'tzion, Right, blow a shofar in Zion and make your know, noise, your uh, um, trumpet in the in my mountain of holiness. You, it, um, all the all the all the inhabitants of the land should tremble um, because the day of the Lord is coming because it is close. We can already recognize the elements, right? It's going to be a day of darkness, right? Right? It's a day of darkness. The darkness is going to is going to spread um, across across um, the mountains like dawn. I'm Rav Vatsum, and now we're switching to locusts. I'm Rav Vatsum, a tremendous nation. It's huge, like we've never seen. What is the darkness that's spreading? It's the locust plague. The locusts are spreading over the land. That's the darkness of the day of God here, right? Um, what is the fire here? We Again, Elements of the day of God, fire, um, um, and it says at it, the land was like a paradise before, like the Garden of Eden before it. midbar and afterwards a desolate desert. and nothing survived. Right again, day of God. Right, but it's locusts. All right. Now the the fire aspect. There are two possibilities. I got this from. If I, I've mentioned before, there's a famous national famous. It's it's. Anyone who studies Yoel knows that there's a National Geographic article from 1905 when there was a plague of locusts in Israel and there was a person there, a National Geographic reporter, or at least someone who had the, had the ability to be a National Geographic reporter, and he wrote an article about what the locust plague was like in Jerusalem. And since it was 1905, he of course knew his book of Joel, right? He knew Yoel and he automatically used it in the International Geographic article to explain versus of Yoel. And one of the things he says, so what are the fires here? One of the things is that there was a stage in the lives of the locusts when they were red and they kind of looked like flames a little bit. Another thing was one of the things they would do to try and stop locusts is they would set fire breaks, right? They would they would set things on fire to stop the wave. So, so that could be the, the flame that we're talking about. Um, um, and it said they, they look like horses. And so he's using the imagery of the day of God to describe these locusts. 
They look like horses. They look like chariots. There's a war, right? They sound like chariots. They're going, you know, they're, they're, they're going through things like fire. They're, ka'am atzum aruch machama. they're like a tremendous nation that is fit for war. Okay. And when he goes on, so I'm going to, I'm going to lift an Eretz Rashish Shemayim. Everything, the, the earth is quaking before. Again, like a day of God, the earthquake. Shemesh Virech Kadar Vachachavim Asmunagham. It's going to be dark. It's darkness. Right. And he says it as if God's leading it. Vashem Natan Kolol Ifne Chelo. God gave his voice before his army. Right, you know, the, this camp is very great. You know, tremendous are those who do His will. Right, because the day of the Lord is 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 awesome, and who can comprehend it? Who can who can who can uh, kind of take it in? Um. So, what's the result? What you need to do is you need to do teshuva. You need to do repentance. What's going on here? Yoel is saying, you guys all know about the day of God. What do you do when the day of God is coming? You have to repent. You have to repent because it's awesome. There's armies. You have to, it's a call to repentance. Therefore, Yoel says, this plague of locusts, that's like the day of God. I showed you how. I just used all that imagery. Means you must repent. This is from God, just like the day of God. This plague of locusts is from God, like the day of God, and you must repent. Now, again, here we have, here we have, this idea that a you can repent and get your sins sins wiped out, which we saw in Yechezkel. This again to me indicates that Yellow is talking after Yechezkel. And also we have this idea that if you repent, you will survive. You'll be okay. Now, of course, right now we're just talking about locusts. But the idea is, what do you do when the day of God is coming? You repent. Okay. Um, and we have some of the great things about repentance. The kiru levavchem ve'al bigdechem. Tear your hearts and not your clothes. And, and return to the Lord your God. Because God is merciful, right? And he is long suffering and, and has a lot of, of kindness and, 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 will, and will change his mind about the evil that he's going to do. Who knows? Maybe God will, will change his mind, right? And he won't do it. And, and he'll leave afterward after him, because we're talking about locusts, enough food that you can bring an offering to God. All right. So, so what's the what's the uh what it what they need to do? They need to call fast. All right. You need to call fast. Um, 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 everything will be fine, and we'll eat in plenty. Okay, that is the answer. He showed that locusts are like the day of God. You therefore need to repent, you need to call fast. That's the way to save yourself from them. And then the second half is actually the day of God, right? Then he goes, this is what's gonna happen in the future, right? And he goes right into the day of God. He's like, okay, this is, gonna, this is like the day of God. And afterwards, you're gonna repent, you're gonna survive this, and then you're gonna have plenty. Right? I will pay back the years that all these different stages of locusts ate all your, all your crops. My, my tremendous army that I released among you. Right? So, so God is going to pay you back for this locust. Locust came from God. You must repent. Right? And now we're going right into seeing it as this day of God in the future. Right? Everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna get visions, right? I am going to spill my spirit over everyone. Everyone's gonna get visions. It's going to be this, this, this future period of miracles. Right, this is where we get it from the Haggadah. I'm going to create all these, um, all these wonders on, on heaven and earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now, blood and fire and pillars of smoke are also imagery from war, right? This is usually what you have in war, right? The pillars of smoke, they burn, their, they burn the towns, right? This is what you have in war, right? So he's using war imagery here as well. But these are going to be visions. Again, he's now going straight into Yom Hashem, Day of the God imagery. And now that we've seen this buildup of imagery through the years, we understand how Yoel has a lot to draw on. Everyone knows about the day of God. So he drew on it 
to say these locusts, they're like the day of God. They're from God. Therefore, the solution is to have, is to repent. Truly repent and you will be fine. Everything will be fine. Now I'm going to talk about the real day of God, right? And here I'm going to use words, I'm going to use imagery that you're familiar, imagery of war, imagery of Hashem HaShiyafech the sun is going to turn to darkness, the, the, the moon to blood, moon to blood is a new one, right? Before the day coming of the, uh, the day of God, the great and the awesome, and again, we have this idea because anyone who calls in the name of God will, will survive. He will escape. In other words, again, once now that we're through the exile, right? We have this idea. You just need to call on God and you will escape this. It will be scary. You will have your know, miraculous things. You'll have a, the sun's going to turn to, to darkness and the moon to blood and this imagery of war. But as long as you call on God, you will survive. All right. And in, in Jerusalem, there will be a remnant, right? There will be the survivors, right? The, the, the survivors. Um, <clears throat> and then here we get our classic day of God imagery where Yola describes God's going to gather all the nations to be judged, right? That's again, just, just right by the book, right? God, um, 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 they're going to be, the nations are going to be gathered. They're going to be judged. Um, um, the, um, um, and um, um, the, the, the Jews in Israel are going to be paid um, it, this is uh, are going to be <laughs> paid back kind of in a in a, in a troubling way for their the, the people that they have lost as slaves, um, right? Um, and there's going to be a war, right? There's going to be a, the war of the day of God. Now I want to point something out to you here. For Yoel, for Yoel, the point of the day of God is this war. Remember that when he's talking about the locusts. He was talking about this war with the locusts. He was talking about the locusts as an army sent by God, as it were, right? Or at least released by God, right? It's the army of God. Here, we're having, this is going to be a war, right? Um, and the point is the war. Declare this among the nations and 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 prepare for war. Um, wake up the heroes and they'll go come. They'll come close and they'll go up. All the men of war. Right? What are you going to do? You're going to beat your plowshares into swords. You're going to make your pruning hooks into spears as opposed to what? Yeshayahu, Isaiah, right? Yoel knows who's, who he's referring to. Everyone knows, everyone knows Yeshayahu, everyone knows Isaiah, right? You're going to turn your, turn your, uh, turn your, your sword, swords into, into, into plows and your, your, your spears into pruning hooks. No, 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 no. There's a war now. There's it's a actually, war. You guys are all yeah. agricultural. You're going to turn your agricultural implements into implements of war. Everyone's going to battle now. The weak person is going to say, I am a strong man. I am a hero. Right? All of the nations are going to come from around and, 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 um, and gather, and their God is going to have his have your heroes, your heroes come down, your mighty men come down. All right. And then all the nations are going to go to the valley of Yehoshaphat, because Yehoshaphat means God judges, right? Um, and their God is going to judge them. All right. Um, and here again, he's using agricultural language to hint to total slaughter, right? He's like, yeah. Uh, release the sickle because the, the the harvest is ready, right? Come down and 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 pound those grapes, right? The 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 the, the grape the 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 wine press is full. Press those grapes, right? Because great is their evil. All right. He's again using he, you say all that agricultural world that you're coming from. It's battle time now, baby, right? They're talking about slaughter. Hamonim, hamonim be'emek right? 
um, the um, multitudes in the in the in the valley of um, kind of the decision of like the decided fate, right? It's like the decided fate, as it were, because the day of the Lord is close in the valley of not just the decision. Harut is like it's it's decided, you know, their fate is decided. Um, and again, Shemesh Berech, Hadaru Bechochavim Asmunokham, sun and the moon are darkened, the, 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 um, the stars have, their kind of, their brightness has been, has been gathered from them. Vadonai Mitzion Yishag, Mirushalai Miten Kolo, Varashu Shemayim Varetz, Vadonai Machasel Amo Umaoz of Nesrael. God is going to roar from Zion, from Jerusalem, he's going to give out his voice, the heaven and earth will trample, and but God is going to be a shelter for his people and a strength for and a fortress for the children of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my mountain of holiness, and Jerusalem will be holy and Foreigners will no longer go into it. Now, I want to point something out here. So, um, again, the people of Jerusalem will be saved, right? There's this tremendous war. You're just going to come down and slaughter everyone. It's actually a very unrealistic war, right? It's not spoken by someone who would have... It sounds like it's not spoken by someone or to a people who is that familiar with war, right? Because this isn't the way wars work. Everyone dies in war, right? It doesn't, you know, just come down. Even the winners are not, are not. But here you have this language of, yeah, you're just gonna come down and win, right? You're gonna turn your, you're gonna turn your agricultural implements into weapons, and you're just gonna come down and you're gonna slaughter and you're gonna win, right? And God's gonna say, gonna be with you, right? And then afterwards, we have the plenty. If you remember Amos. Um, and the earlier Zachary is the idea of natural plenty. So on the one hand, we have this juice, the, 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 the mountains are going are gonna to drip juice, uh, um, um, grape juice, right? And the hills will, will have you know, um, a milk and all of, and there's going to be water in all in all the you know in all the in all the stream beds and and there's going to be a stream coming out from the temple as we have right in Yechezkel and in essentially in Zechariah we have that that tradition here also of a river coming from the temple um so what we have here and 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 it um um, right, Yehuda will always be, from that time will be settled, there won't be another exile. Okay, again, remember that Yoel remembers an exile. And I am not going to, to um, I'm not going to not hold those responsible for their blood, right? And I, God, want to dwell in Zion. In other words, why is Yoel talking? What, what's the point of this war? The point of this war is to take vengeance against those who did it to Israel and Yehuda. And we see that earlier. I mean, I kind of skipped over it quickly because if we go, um, again, when I talk to you about he remembers a, 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 um, um, an exile, um, in, if we look at back at verses, um, hey, to Chet, um, uh, five to eight, you took, you took, he says, well, he's talking to, to all these different nations. He said, you took my gold and silver and you sold the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem to the Greeks in order to, to take them far away from their, from their borders. All right. Um, and therefore I am going to to uh, bring them back out of the place. And in retribution, I'm going to sell your own sons and daughters. Your own sons and daughters are going to be sold um, by, uh, by the children of Yehuda to, to a foreign nation, right? In retribution. So in other words, this is talking about how, um, 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 and it goes back, I keep on having to go back in, 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 in verse two in Pasuk Bet, it says, um, Right, I'm going to judge them there. I'm going to judge the nations. I'm going to judge the nations for my nation and my and my territory that you have and my um 
um, at my territory that you have you have scattered them among the nations and my land and my land you have uh, you have uh, split up. So in other words, you came in, you conquered, you exiled, you split up my land, you sold them to slaves. Now I'm taking now now I'm going um, now you're getting it uh, you're getting paid for it. And in the end, he goes once back that I am not going to to consider that blood clean. Right, that's, I'm going to take vengeance, and God dwells in Zion. Right, and that's 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 a big part of for y'all the importance of this war. No, 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 we're not going to end with the plowshares. We've got the plowshares now. We're going to turn those into weapons of battle, and we're going to take vengeance. There's going to be a war that 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 delivers judgment against the nations that did this to us. Right, um, I see. There's a uh, before we. We finish with just a few verses from Malachi. Um, I am going to uh, take some uh, comments and questions. Um, so Moses says, "I think three four is supposed to be the origin of the term blood moon." Um, I, I it may be. I think there. I mean, I think sometimes the moon is just orange, right? Isn't it like? Isn't isn't it just like astronomically? Sometimes the moon there's a there's a thing that turns the moon um, orange. I never remember. There is, <laughs> but it's associated with the uh, lunar eclipse. Yeah. Like Lunar eclipse. Okay. Um, um, and Danny and Libby say it appears that Yol is saying explicitly is roughly what Zachariah is saying implicitly that the wonders of Yom Hashem will be something not seen since the ten plagues of Egypt. Um, there are a lot of things that 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 connect to Egypt. I I find it less with the Day of God. I mean, there is absolutely Zachariah when Zachariah says. It's true that when Zachary is saying, what is Egypt, what's going to happen to Egypt if Egypt doesn't come, they're going to get a plague. We are, I think, supposed to remember the plagues of Egypt, even though we're using a different word. We're not saying Makah, we're saying Magefa, and we just talked about the plague where everyone's flesh is melting off, which is what the Egyptians are supposed to get. Um, I think that Yol is not, doesn't care that, I don't think Yol is even thinking of the 10 plagues of Egypt, to be perfectly honest. I think he's really thinking of the exile and the destruction that was and vengeance. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, um, but you know, you can absolutely disagree with me. Um, Susan says such disparate sequences of events on Yom Hashem in different prophecies. Could you repeat or suggest how the situation in different periods explains these differences? Okay, I will. <laughs> Does Yom Hashem relate to or is connected to the coming of the Mashiach? Yeah, sure. The, the idea is, well, I mean, it depends on, I mean, for those uh, in those works where the Mashiach himself is important and in not every prophecy of the end time is a person important they're not always connected specifically to the day of god right they're not it the day of god is one of the things that's going to happen right you can see that in these we don't have um there's a bit of a, there's kind of a, a mention um where where um he says you know um i think was that was that now i forgot it was y'all your chesco said you know the 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 um, weak ones are going to be like the house of David, right? So there, there are hints, right? But it's not, it's the point of, usually the point of the day of God, and this is a good, a good question, because usually the point of the day of God is that God is the king, right? God is the king. Everyone has to recognize God, right? So, and sometimes it's said explicitly, God is the king, right? So if God is the king, then we're talking about God, and we're not talking about the Mashiach who is the king. Right? Who is the future king? Right? Again, why do we call him the Mashiach? Because he's anointed. Who was anointed? There are two people who were anointed, the king and the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. So we're talking about the king, right? So usually when we're talking about Yom Hashem, the point is that God does it. Because God does it, we don't usually bring in in those specific things, we don't bring in the Mashiach, the king, right? Even if the prophet talks about the, the person who will be king. In other passages, it's less likely to to show up in Yom Hashem. And again, um, not every prophet uh, cares that much about the person who's going to be king, right? The person who's going to be king, that's something that God is going to make him king. Now, is he going to lead it or not going to lead this war? Again, in what we've read, and we're going to look at Malachi soon, and what we've read, he's, it, it, the point is that God does it. The point is it's from God. Right. And that's the whole point of Yom Hashem that 
there's a recognition both by Israel and by the nations, and especially by the nations, that God is the king and that he needs to be worshipped afterwards, uh, whether or not he's explicitly called the king or not. Um, <clears throat> So um, if we um, if we continue on, so in Yechezkel, he was explicitly called the king. Let me go back to here. So if we, now let's take a look at Malachi, okay? And here in Malachi, it's just a, a, a fairly, um, a fairly short, um, um, I mean, and, and again, um, it, it, most of Malachi is not concerned with this, but he ends where I'm reading in 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 uh, chapter three, Parakimel, uh, pasuk um, yudet. Um, should I actually? Yeah. Um, um, pasuk yudet, verse nineteen. Ki hine hayom ba boer katanor. Because the day is coming, burning like a furnace. Now, this is different from our typical day of God, right? A day is coming when who is going to be destroyed? All of the wicked people. Now here we're really moving much further toward what we see as kind of these apocalypses that we read in the second temple period, right? Where what's the point of them? Yeah, sure, maybe the nations are being destroyed, but also the wicked people, the wicked people of Israel, okay? Um, the righteous, right, are gonna come out, those who fear God, right? The sun of righteousness is going to shine and heal and heal them, and they're going to go forth and they're going to be like Egle Marbe, they're going to be like these, these, like these fat calves that are raised in, 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 in that are raised in stalls, they're well fed, and they're just going to frolic around, right? Um, you're going to trample the wicked, right? The wicked are going to be like ashes under your feet. But Yom Asher Ani Oset Amar Asher, and the day that I create, that I do this, says the Lord God. All right. Um, so what is the so what is the day of God about in this case? The day of God is oh I wasn't was I sharing my screen I wasn't sharing my screen but you all heard it right so so um, what is the what is this uh, what is the point the point is and I'll share my screen now just so you can see it so you can believe me. Um, um, the point is that the wicked are destroyed and the righteous do great. All right. Again, um, the, um, the, the righteous are, are healed and they have a wonderful time and they will trample the wicked. Right. So this is not like the day of God that we were reading about before. There's no judgment. This, this is not talking about the judgment of nations. Right. It's talking about the wicked are going to be destroyed and the righteous are going to do great. We haven't seen that in other days of God. Now, um, can we call this a day of God? Well, afterwards it says specifically, remember the Torah of Moshe, you know, the laws. I am sending you Eliyahu, the prophet, Eli Elijah, Leah, Eliyah, the prophet, before the day of God, the great and awesome. Pen avovi Katie et Aretz Cherem, and he is going to reconcile the generations so that I don't come and smite the earth. Because remember, day of God, ominous. So what's it for 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 Malachi? What's going to keep this from being destroyed? That Eliyahu and Avi is going to come first, and he is going to reconcile the generations so that everyone does good. On the other hand, what the passage we just read before that was talking about not about judgment of the nations, right? It was talking about, about the, the, the victory of the righteous over the wicked. And this is the first time we've seen that kind of connection. Now, this was a bit of a stretch because you don't have to say, well, is this really the day of God? Because say, yeah, it's a future day. It's a messianic day. Is this supposed to fit into that framework or not? 
We don't know. The second passage certainly is. It's called the day of God. And again, we have this kind of ominous note to it. So again, what do we see? So how, what are we seeing as the, um, as the references, excuse me, as the references to the day of God continue? So in the beginning, what we were seeing, the earlier prophets, um, we already, we're kind of seeing the setup of the, what's the framework, right? And sometimes we're seeing some pieces, not, not others, but in general, um, judgment of the nations, uh, war, um, darkness, miraculous happenings, very ominous, and kind of a, 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 a cleansing of Israel for the remnant, right? Then once we get to beyond the exile and this idea that, you know what? God can just, God can, can actually rescue us, rescue us completely. We don't have to suffer at all because it, and also, to, honestly, I think also part of it is a getting further away from war. In other words, when Yoel describes war and he describes it as like, yay, war, and like, we're just going to come down and slaughter them and it'll be great. That sounds like someone who doesn't know what war is like right? And I think they're further from, as they get further from a war, it's easier to look forward to a war, right? Amos says, no, you should not want the day of God. Are you kidding me? Right? All these prophets are saying, no, this is going to be really scary and awful, right? Um, um, now, honestly, you can't just make that split that way because Zechariah is, Zechariah or Deutero Zechariah, because the end of Zechariah, the end of Zechariah, you're talking about um, um, you're, ta- you're also talking about well into the return to Zion, and he really does describe a war where there is tremendous distress, where the city is, is damaged and the women, are, it's horrible. It's just horrible, right? And um, what he's describing is terrible, right? So just because it's later doesn't mean that there's not, there won't, no one's recognizing what a war can be like. But we're moving more towards this idea of, you know what? You can have all the peoples can be judged and Israel can be saved or or all the people can be judged and the righteous are saved, right? So when Zechariah, you say, and the Kedoshim, the Kedoshim are going to escape. You know, they're going to escape to the valley and the Kedoshim will be with you. The holy people will be with you. And again, are you talking about the angels will be going to be on your side? Are you talking about the holy people? You could read it either way. But the idea that the righteous can, can, um, can can um, escape. And then we have Yoel, where he can use the idea of Yom Hashem of the day of God is already so well understood. And this idea that a righteous person can escape is so well understood that he can use this imagery to talk about the locusts and say, clearly, this is like the day of God. And therefore, what you need to do is really repent, truly repent. That's the way for us to be saved from this thing. And he does that by drawing parallels to the day of God. So we see how this idea has gone from this is an ominous day and you don't know who's going to, you don't know who is going to survive to this is a scary day, bad things are going to happen. But if you're righteous, if you are a God fearer, then God will help you. God will be on your side. Right. And Yoel can draw from that to say, and this is what we need to do about the locusts. Right. So we kind of see how the idea of Yom Hashem continues on. Now, if we were going to go, go on and look at Second Temple Apocalypses, we would see how the idea of the righteous, um, the victory of the righteous over the wicked becomes a very central idea in these apocalypses. That not only, not, it's not just Israel versus nations, which is an aspect of it, but it's also righteous versus the wicked. The wicked are going to burn, the righteous are going to get wonderful stuff, and that's part of this kind of apocalyptic future, future day. So um, thank you for sticking with you. I hope you enjoyed that. And it was fun for me too. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to kind of take you through um, kind of Yom Hashem in different uh, books of prophecy, and I will see you next week.